What if I told you that you could make 20, 30, 40, 50, even $100,000 a month working less than 10 hours a week? Well, your first thought would be that sounds too good to be true. But I want you to think about that thought. I want you to really think about how weird it is that we live in a world that has normalized the idea that something that is too good, that is very good, can't be true. And so what is the opposite of that? What are we, what belief are we affirming when we lean into that? Is that the only things that are true are things that are bad? Mm. Like if I tell you that some horrific event happened, you won't question it because we have been conditioned to believe that horrific things are normal and true and that the best things that could ever happen to us, our dreams, our visions realized are far beyond our reach and are so unrealistic that even someone mentioning the chance of you living the life that you've been praying for, the life that you've been dreaming for, when we serve an abundant God who owns all and is able to give us anything that is in his will that he desires to give us like and he literally tells us to ask him and you are sitting here telling me that the life that you've been praying for is too good to be true how where is your faith come on y'all and and i'm not mad but i'm fired up because like we have been programmed you have been programmed and if you have children you're probably unintentionally programming your children to believe the same thing and this is why there's so much difficulty like i'm gonna go through some of these sayings and you're gonna when you stop to think about it you're gonna be like oh my gosh i can't believe that i've been saying this my whole life i can't believe that i've been thinking this. i can't believe that i never thought anything was wrong with this all right let let's let's go through some sayings that will reinforce this belief to you and if you're wondering what the heck does this have to do with making money effortlessly well you have to be in the right mind frame to be able to believe that you can even make money without effort and if you believe things like making 100k in a month in 10 to 5 hour wake working 5 to 10 hours a week is too good to be true, then the rest of what I say to you will go in one ear and out of the other because you have a wall up. And so we're gonna break the wall down because all those other videos that are giving you the how-tos and the strategies without helping you have the mindset shifts to actually implement those things are not telling you anything, okay? You're bringing a horse to water who literally has a muzzle on his mouth. And I will not allow you to come to the water that God has given me to share, to, to help to quench your thirst without making sure that the muzzle is gone to the best of my abilities, okay? Let's go over some of these things. No pain, no gain. Mm. What does that reinforce to us? That the only things that, that we can get in life are gonna have to be gone through pain. Another one, nothing worth having comes easy. What? What? Is this why y'all in toxic relationships? <laughs> Listen, is this is why, if this is why the girls are in toxic relationships, because somebody told them, that their relationship being hard, that them getting disrespected, and because what comes with that word hard, right? So many people have different definitions of the Bible talks about hard work. We're not against biblical hard work, but the hard that this world has given us is not what the Bible is talking about. And saying that nothing worth having comes easy, you are literally setting yourself up to make everything harder than it has to be. And the truth is that a lot of things you've probably had in your life that you think came from hard being being hard or process being laborious or having to do a whole lot of stuff, there was somebody else who did it easily. And that's just the truth. The hardest thing in your life that you have accomplished, somebody else did it much more efficiently and much more easily simply because they believed they could. And then their mind opened up the pathways to show them opportunities to get it done easier. I don't know if this is true, but I heard that someone said, Bill Gates said a quote before that if you want to get a job done efficiently, ask the laziest person you know how to do it. And while we don't support laziness, we are biblical over here. Um, the, the concept of when you ask a person who thinks about how to do things with the least amount of effort, their mind is programmed differently than a person who's programmed with sayings like this that expects for things to be hard. Because if you expect it to be hard, you're not gonna try to do anything to change it. Like I have a friend who was dieting and she's working on losing weight. And she had a thought in her mind and that thought was like, well, when you're dieting, you just go to bed hungry. She's like, I even saw another video where somebody confirmed this belief that if you're dieting, they're just normal to go to bed hungry. And it's like, but what if that wasn't true? What if there was a way that you could eat low calorie foods that were high volume and that would fill you up so that you would still be under your calories, but you'd go to bed full. And that moment for her was just like an aha moment because her mind never even bothered to look for another solution because it had accepted her previous belief as truth. How many opinions of somebody else have been repeated so many times to you that you believe that it's true? 
And y'all, we got to be able to detach what was said from the person who said it. So many people are laying in bed with lies and holding on to them, going to sleep, snuggling them at night because mama told you, because pastor told you. They can tell you and they can love you and they can still be wrong, okay? And you can learn for the both of you and you can learn for your family, for your generations and bring the truth back to those who have ears to hear, all right? Next one, if it were easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> it's not true. This is so not, this is like the definition of like, you know, in math class, when they're talking about correlation versus causation, the correlation here is that if something were easy, everyone would do it. Meaning that because a lot of people are doing it, it must not be easy. But you know, people also get attacked by sharks when they have ice cream. You're probably like, what were you talking about, Danielle? <laughs> That's in my old probability and statistics class, the example my teacher used to show the difference between correlation and causation. The reason why shark attacks go up when people have ice cream is because both of these two things are happening during the summer. And so someone saying if it were easy, everyone would do it, assumes that the only reason people aren't doing it is because it isn't easy. But is it possible that, that the school system has raised generations of people who are trained to be employees who are trained to just believe what they are told and not question it? And so when an easy opportunity comes along, it's painted as a get rich quick scheme and MLM or some sort of scam. I literally have a legitimate business where I'm making over $100,000 a month. I work five to 10 hours a week. And the amount of just like immediately people saying it's a scam when they have no idea what I do, no idea the impact that I have had on people's lives, no idea of, of just the blessings that the Lord has poured out, not just on me, but on the students who have been in my program to literally change lives and generations. And just because I said I work five to 10 hours a week and it's something that their brains cannot comprehend. They're saying like, no, that's not possible. It's just not possible because it doesn't fit within the paradigm and the worldview and the perspective that we have been sold. It's just not true. A couple of more, success requires sacrifice. Sacrificing what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Let's get specific. The road to success is paved with obstacles. Again, so much of your life is gonna be defined by the perspective that you have and the paradigm through which you see the world. And so you can either view, you can view, we can look at the same thing and you can view it as an obstacle and I can view it as an opportunity. Somebody else is looking at the same step that you have right now, this, this block, let's call it a neutral block, right? And one person is looking at this as something getting in their way and another person is looking at this as something that's gonna help lift them up to get to the next stage. What is an obstacle? An obstacle to me is an opportunity. I don't have anything in my life that works against me because God said that all things are working for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And since that is me, I don't have to worry about it. If, if it's not working for me, it's working on me, okay? It's working for my good. So why would I despise? How can I look at God with, and say, you know, Lord, I have an open hand to receive, but not an open hand for you to take away? And who said that the things that God puts in our life are obstacles? We have trials, right? We have tribulation. That's biblical. I'm not taking away from those very real things. But even in those seasons, the Bible says to rejoice always, to give thanks always, to pray without ceasing. And so when you decide that everything that, that comes up, every, every challenge is an obstacle, instead of viewing it as an opportunity, you lost before you even won. A few more sayings. You have to suffer to succeed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That just like frustrates me so much because like who is saying this stuff and who is believing it? And I know because I had it said to me and I was one believing it before. So that's a rhetorical question. But the idea that you have to suffer to succeed is something that so many of you believe. And I know that because I was there too. And you're almost a hardaholic where you are just addicted to something being hard because you were taught that's the only way that it's going to work out well. And when something is going easily, when something's going smoothly, when you're talking to a guy and there are no red flags and you're just being romanced and danced and things are going well and you self-sabotage because because somebody told you that nothing worth having comes easy. And so you gonna make it hard to get because at least if it's hard, then you know that it's good because to you hard equals good. Hard does not equal good. I want you by the end of this video to know that without a shadow of a doubt in your bones, success doesn't come without struggle. Again, correlation versus causation. Just because there were some people who struggled to get where they were, doesn't mean the only way to get where they are is to struggle. For example, the success that I have, the first two years that I spent in my business, I spent looking around for free information, fragmented stuff. I was feeling overwhelmed and just like completely at a loss because I was like listening to 17,000 different people and I was not getting results. And so it was a struggle for me to get to my first dollar. I have students who have invested in my program, create a course and quit. 
And they have literally made money in the first 30 days. They didn't have to struggle because they they did the work and invested in a program that enabled them to skip steps. And so I have students who are doing as well as me, if not better than I am, because and, and they did it without the same struggle I had to go through in the beginning when I didn't know what I know now. And so again, you will see somebody talking about, oh my gosh, well, you know, I'm, I made, I make, they're making $30 million and they're making whatever they're making. But you have to ask yourself, do you want it the way they got it? They're talking about they were sleeping on the floor and sleeping in cars and getting up at 5 a.m. and missed all of their children's sporting events. And I think this is why women in particular are so turned off generally at the idea of business because it sounds terrible, honestly. The way that most entrepreneurs talk about business, the way they talk about their relationships, how they isolated themselves, all the sacrifices that they made, how they weren't there for events and how, you know, now they have the money, but now they don't have any relationships with anyone because they isolated themselves for 10 years to make their first million. And it's like, why would I want to do that? And let me tell you something. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to do that. Um, and, and, and you see, the thing is, I'm going to make a little side note here because there are some of you guys who grew up with single mothers. And a lot of the rhetoric I can say from experience, I was not raised in a single parent household, but my best friends growing up both were. And the idea of being strong and independent, like, and seeing like a woman who's like, oh, she's strong and independent. She's getting it. I'm going to get it like her. I'm going to grind it. I'm going to go and I'm going to hustle. She was like that because she had to be, not because she wanted to be. And that's what you have to understand. We got to stop modeling after that because a woman who is a single woman has no choice but to be in her masculine and in her feminine. She has no choice but to play both roles because what she is doing is double duty. And so what it does is now you see a reflection of a woman who is generally going to be more masculine than feminine because being masculine is generally what it takes to dominate in spaces in the world that were created for and by men. And I don't think that's a bad thing. That's a separate conversation we can have. But for right now, the focus is on the fact that you have to then adapt to a masculine way of thinking and a masculine way of doing to a masculine circadian cycle of getting up at a certain time and doing nine to fives, which the nine to five life is literally not built for women whatsoever different video. We'll talk about cycle syncing. But the point is that when you are in that type of environment and you see a woman who has to live and work like a man, and then you model yourself after that woman, you are already behind the eight ball. And it's not because she's not an amazing person. It's not because she wasn't trying her best. I'm sure she was, but we have to identify that, not glorify that. We have to say, mama, you did your best. I understand what you did. I understand why you did it. And then I'm sure that what every mother wants is that her child will do better than she would. And so if you can get even more success than she had, do even better than she did with a fraction of the effort, why would you intentionally choose the hard thing and the hard way? Okay. So the key to making money effortlessly is understanding that no one is paying you for your effort. Mind blown. And I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to sit on this. We're going to dive into this. Okay. What, what is effort in the first place? The definition of effort is a vigorous or determined. Here's my favorite part. Attempt a vigorous or determined attempt. Woo. I'm about to hold on. Get, get your drink, get your drink. <laughs> okay. Listen to me. Who is paying you for an attempt? That's what I want to know. You need a you need to give them my phone number and hook me up so I can get paid for attempting things. Cause I attempted a lot of things in my life that did not pan out. Imagine you going to a restaurant and you sit down and you paid a hundred dollars for this gourmet meal. It's Valentine's Day. You know, you're out with your husband or whoever, gourmet meal sitting in front of you. And they bring it out, they bring a gourmet restaurant, they bring out the meal, and it is completely burnt. It is burnt. It is nearly inedible. And uh, you obviously, you call the waiter over and you say, excuse me, what's going on here? I'm not, uh, can we send it back? Like, can you make it again? And he said, well, the chef stayed up all night. And you're like, that, that's sad. He should have stayed up a little longer. <laughs> maybe, maybe he wouldn't have burnt it. He clearly fell asleep at the end. And, 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 they're, and they're like, no, like, well, you have to pay because he gave a vigorous and determined attempt gonna be like you're crazy you're out of your actual mind if you think that I'm going to pay you because he tried really hard and that is what we're saying when we say that we think effort is what produces money we are saying that we think trying or attempting is what people are paying for your job doesn't even pay you for effort your job does not pay you for how hard you try to do something okay your job is paying you for the outcome for the value for the result that you are providing them 
And so the be, just continuing down that track, no one is paying you for your time. I use the phrase time, um, stop trading your time for money because that's what the, the, is the language that my customers use. That's what you're familiar with. But if we look down to it, you're not trading your time for money. Because if you were, you could just go into your job, sit at a desk for eight hours and do nothing and be paid for being there. That would be getting paid for your time. The, you know, comfort women who are getting paid to go and sit with the man and just look pretty. They're getting paid for their time. And even then they're getting paid for other value that they're providing, which we're not going to talk about. But if you were just going to sit in there, you'd be getting paid for your time, but you're not. You are being paid for the value that you are providing to the company. And they put a dollar amount on that value to tell you what the services that you do are worth. And the people who make the most in the employee sphere of things are the people who provide the most value, which are generally specialized skills that are are not easily replaced. And this is why somebody can work extremely hard like a teacher or a construction worker and still be paid very little because it is not based on how much time you are putting in. And for those who say, well, don't teachers provide a valuable resource? Well, you know, that's what happens when the government gets involved in paying for things because private school teachers certainly get paid more. And even then, if you think they, they would deserve to be paid more, the market, the consumer is what determines what that person or that that employee is, is willing to be paid. And same thing for your business. So if you want to make money effortlessly, then you one, realize that you're not getting paid for your effort. So it doesn't matter how hard you try. It doesn't matter how many hours you put in. It doesn't matter how many things that you did or how long you spent doing it. None of those things matter. No one is paying you for your effort and your time, but you're getting paid for your value. So you have to think about what is the value that others receive from you. If you are not making a lot of money, the truth is it's because you're not providing a lot of value to someone else. The richest people in the world are those who gave the most value to either a lot of people, think Jeff Bezos, love him or hate him. He has made a lot of money because 90% of the people watching this video have Amazon Prime, okay? Or have ordered something off of Amazon or have gotten value, have Amazon Prime or something like that. You're watching Amazon video or whatever. And he has provided so much value to people in convenience and being able to help people to get their products, get things that they don't have locally sent to them in one, in even one day now, in one or two days. And so that is why he's making so much money because he's providing a lot of value to a lot of people. And that's why it's possible for me to live the life that I do. Like yesterday, I made $22,000, $22,000 in a single day. And what did I do yesterday? I wasn't sitting at my laptop all day working really hard and putting in a lot of effort to make money. I was at Pilates. I started Pilates and I was at Pilates yesterday and I took my mom to lunch. I came home, we had family Bible study and I walked on my treadmill and I cooked dinner and the food that I cooked with was whole, organic, pasture-raised, grass-fed food that we bought without even needing to check the receipts, like putting it in there, which unfortunately is a bit of a flex in this economy. And I was not working. I literally was sitting down with my mom and dad who live in a guest home on my property. And me and my mom and dad and my husband were all chatting. And literally before we went over there, we had one amount. After we left, two hours later, we had made $8,000 sitting there talking to them. I know that sounds crazy. I know it does. And I know your programming is saying too good to be true, too good to be true, too good to be true, but it's not. It is my life. And I'm just telling you what happened in my life so that you can see evidence that it does not require you to actively put in your time in order to make income in order to attract income. And so if you are ready to do the same thing in your own life, the only question you need to answer is how do I provide value to others in a way that doesn't require my time? And if you want an unlimited amount of income, you have to ask, how do I actually help an unlimited amount of people? And this is where people mess up. Because when you understand that you need to provide value to other people, the quickest thing to do is, of course, do that in getting a job and then getting that, you know, paycheck drug every two weeks that's going to keep you there, give you just enough to keep you on the hook, but not enough so that you can really enjoy your life. Because how could you, 40 hours of your week are taken away and you're missing moments with your family and you're having to ask someone else permission to do the things you want to do with your life? And then you may go into, okay, well, I want to provide someone else value, but taking your time. So you're doing business models like, um, you know, homemade goods like baking or pottery or candle making or things like that, where you're providing value to someone else. But if you stop, the money stops. If you want to go on vacation for two weeks, 
you can't make, you're not making candles on vacation. You're not making any money. And then if you want to be able to do something like even like virtual, like coaching or um, like certain business models like that, where you can't help an unlimited number amount of people doing that, you will still have a cap on coaching, on virtual assisting. And in my masterclass where I go over exactly what I did to be able to create a course, replace my job and 10X my income and come home. Like I literally in the first um, step go over like all our mistake. I go over every single business model you could possibly think of and explain to you what the problem is with it. So if you're thinking about going into this, you really need to watch that masterclass because I break it all down in that video. And so there are only a few business models that truly allow you to help an unlimited amount of people with a very small amount of time being required and a very low barrier or point of entry. Because there are some things that do allow you to have like no time invested, like real estate or stocks, but you need so much to start those things that I really recommend them for once you have already accumulated a good amount of wealth to invest them into that afterwards. But it's really not a good starting point, especially if you wanna be able to do this like within the next year. So what's the solution then? How do you actually do this? So. There is really one main way that we can take our things we already have, things that God has already given us, our gifts, our knowledge, and our expertise, and we can package that into a digital product. And why a digital product? It's so important because you will never run out of stock. You will never run out of stock on a digital product. You never have to worry about supply chain issues or a... <coughs> You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what's happened in 2020. You don't have to worry about that. And so many people who did like drop shipping, their business is completely collapsed. Under that Amazon FBA, their business is completely collapsed because their supply chain issues were so messed up. They had so many orders on back order and customers who were canceling and asking for refunds. And that's just not something that can enable you to have the lifestyle that you want to have if you really want to produce effortless income and create money passively and on autopilot. And so a digital product is a must, but just not any digital product. It needs to be a digital product that is enough income that you can actually reasonably quit your job within the next three to six months. If you are out there selling, selling some $10 PDF, you're gonna need literally hundreds of thousands of people to see that offer before it even equals five to $10,000 in a month. And versus if you have a $1,000 course that you are giving someone an impactful transformation, you're giving them that value, it's in a course. So that way you, they are able to self-study, go at their own pace to get that transformation without it costing you more of your time. You're not sitting there having to teach and answer the same repetitive questions that everyone is asking. You're able to get a streamlined system and a streamlined solution in something that you already have done, a transformation you have already had in your life or you have helped someone else gain in their life. And then when you attach it to an automated system, that system does all of the work for you to nurture the client, to enroll them into your program, to tell them the next steps while you are out in Bora Bora, okay? While you are in the kitchen making pancakes with your kids who are now able to homeschool or doing whatever it is, while you're traveling the world as a digital nomad, whatever your goal is, or maybe you wanna be like me and be that Range Rover Pilates mom that's at Target at a random day at 2 p.m. who has a spa membership, and I can't believe I'm even saying that, who's having family Bible study with her husband every night, which was something that we struggled so much to do when we both had nine to fives. And by the way, he's retired now and literally works with me on the business full time. So we can do all of this together with our entire family being home instead of him breaking his back or going into some soul sucking job that is dimming his light every single day. And so that is the secret to effortless income. And if you are ready to tap into that for yourself, to create a system that allows you to be able to make money even when you're sleeping, and what does the work-life balance look like? And I hate that word, work-life balance. I don't want balance, right? We want a whole lot more life than we do work. And what happens when you set this system up is you just make short videos, like TikTok videos, which is literally, I got my business to over $100,000 a month, just making 60 second to two or three minute videos on TikTok, attracting people in. In. Like the same thing that I'm doing here on YouTube, literally making 10 minute to 20 or 30 minute videos, which for some of you, that might even be easier than making a short videos because you have so much to say you're so passionate about the gifts and expertise that you have. And that that's it. You sit down, turn the camera on for a couple of minutes, make a video, turn it off and you go live your life. You might have some questions or emails that you might answer. If you decide to add a community to your program, you can have that community there and pop in and out and you know allow that to flourish, but it is the most low maintenance thing. And the craziest part is, I have made over $120,000 this month, and this is the least I have ever worked. I have just enjoyed my life. I've enjoyed the holiday season. I've enjoyed the time with my husband and with my parents and just enjoying where we're at right now. 
and I have made so much money and it is even broken limiting beliefs that I had about what it would require to get to this level. Because most of the people that you see making 100K plus per month are running around like chickens with their heads cut off. They're doing lives, they're, they're DMing people, they're cold calling, they're getting on sales calls, they're trying to recruit their friends and family. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But this is your reminder that you do not have to. You can build a sustainable, impactful, God-honoring, honest business that still enables you to work less than five hours a week to create income passively so that the business works while you don't and that you truly can make money effortlessly as a woman here in 2024 and doing it in a feminine way that aligns with your cycle, that aligns with your God-given nature and talent so that you're not like doing business like a man where you're in your masculine consistently hustling and grinding and chasing whether you're attracting wealth you're attracting clients and people who really want to work with you and people who really want your program in their life and are eager to be a part of it so if you're interested in that make sure you check out the training link in the description again i go over the three steps that i use to create a course replace my income and come home and be able to travel the world so i'll see you in the training bye